Let's take a look at the patch notes here, guys. April 17th. I thank you. If you haven't seen before, watch the Overwatch short Dragons on YouTube. First, our fit explains the lore of Genji and it is freaking amazing. Is it the one where you've got uh, Genji and Hanzo like meeting each other and he's like, Oh no, you're my brother? And he's like, Shuken Kai And then they fight and stuff and it was like, How can you use my family's dragon? I've seen it, it's amazing. Thank you for the suggestion. It's uh, It's really cool. But I forgot which one was which one. Uh, yeah, it's. It, I think it's one of the best Overwatch shorts. It's like very martial arty. All right. April seventeenth. Heroes of. The, I really like the um, the robot with the bird too. So cute. Amazing. All right, we've seen this one. Haramura. We've read about it. We've seen it in the video. And so uh, there's. It's just crazy. There's four different camps. Uh, art. Movement speed bonus have received visual polish. Nullification now has visual effect, which is good because you could barely see it when Tassadar uh, sprayed anyone with that. Real money purchases are still disabled in open beta. And just as a reminder, it will not transfer to life. For those of you who are wondering now, April 25th is when it releases. And of course you can see all about it on my stream on that day. What is this? Badge. Oh yeah, sorry. I have emotes on, on my browser anywhere. So sometimes funny pictures show up. Hero Brawl will now award XP. I knew all this already. Let's take a look at the balance. Cassia. Cassia received mostly buffs. She needs fewer quest requirement hits for her true side. And it will do more damage. 15 instead of 10. In terms of her Fend, it's an 8 second cooldown for fewer mana. Ball Lightning goes up a bit in mana. And Valkyrie, which suffers from a low travel time and an early warning to dodge... It just gets cooldown reduction. They don't make it any stronger in terms of pulling someone from the back line, but instead they make you to be able to do it far more often with a 50% CDR and 10 mana cheaper. <laughs> There's something new about the brawl, okay. Completing the weekly heroes brawl will now award a loot chest rather than a portrait and gold. Greetings, friend. Okay. That's interesting. That, that makes it still worth it, I think. Now back to Cassia. I thank you. Guess this map will be an HL totally banana without yeah. communication. <laughs> maybe. With all like Dragonshire. Heroes and maps when need map bans and maybe a third hero ban phase. What do you think, Grubby? I think when we reach 90 heroes, we could have a third ban. Maybe 80. Maybe before. The truth might be out there. I think between 80 and 100 is the right, you know, the right call. Maybe even 70. I don't know. You could be right. You could be right. Yeah, maybe 70 or 80, actually, not 100. That's too late. Uh, thank you very much. Impale. Health required to trigger the bonus damage has been increased from 40 to 50. Okay. So that's the buff because they need to be under 50 now instead of under 40 to get the bonus damage. A War Traveler is the one that gives her movement speed while kiting. 3% per stack. So before it was 5 times 3 is 15. Now it's 5 times 4 is 20%. It's probably not the better level 7. As I think that Surge of Light. But uh, it got buffed. And so did this one. Surge of Light. Damage dealt on activation is reduced. So it's a little bit weaker. Huh? Okay. Infinite Lightning now gets a CDR of 3 seconds per bounce instead of 4. That makes sense. It was really easy to just get an instant reset on it. Greymane. Greymane, Inner Beast. Cooldown increased from 16 to 20 seconds on Inner Beast. Now, Greymane is one of the top of the line assassins right now in the meta. 
probably the best range auto attacker without a doubt possibly the best ranged assassin period um, yeah I think he's always first or second pick or ban almost always first or second pick right now in the tournament meta and hero league so that's I think an okay nerf every basic attack while inner beast is active now reduces its cooldown by half a second and then wolf wolfheart brings it to oh that's not really a nerf that's a buff cursed bullet what cursed bullet 40 percent What did I just say? <laughs> they buffed the best assassin in the game! Because we don't like tanks and we don't like other assassins. You know what? This is actually a nerf because Greyman is now going to get uh, banned every time. Before he didn't. So it's actually a nerf. Like it will reduce his play amount by at least half. Zebo, Plague of Toads, damage increase from 126 to 140 over 6 seconds. Okay, this is kind of his weakest ability and it's a bit stronger, but let's read all the changes before we make a verdict. Basic attack damage reduced, that is justified. It's actually insane. At level 20, Gary hits for 450 damage and slams for 600. Health reduced, that's fair as well. At level 20, Gargantuan has almost as much HP as Arthas like he has 4200 I think at level 20 uh, and Arthas has 4500 of course there's also various kinds of armor uh, but it's uh, that's I think uh, merited the gargantuan nerfs he's a big part of Nazebo's power level right now and he's one of the best ranged damage dealers now, I want to say assassins but he's a specialist fine it's one of the best damage dealers. So this is uh, this is fair. Superstition from fifty to forty. Uh, that's that's fine. It's really strong in the right situation. It was actually bonkers crazy. This is a good change. You still take ice block if it's important, but superstition in the right situation was too good. Humongoid CDR from forty five to forty. That means that you will have twenty seconds uptime, ten seconds downtime. Then you can cast it again. Twenty seconds uptime, ten. Right now it was twenty five, twenty five. And honestly, I do believe Humongoid is better than Vile uh, Infection, even when he has uh, his stacks up and stuff. This is a nerf. But it's not the usage of deals. Vow Infection, now you need 175 stacks. Well, I think I might just play a whole bunch more uh, Humongoid. But 175 is not too difficult to reach. It really depends on your team, you know. You could be Nazebo, you could be stacking here and there. And if your team is just non-stop brawling, fighting over nothing, fighting over no objective... It is very possible that you have to fight more often or risk having to mute your entire ally team, especially at the lower levels. He's one of the best effortless damage dealers in the game, but he does need to do a bit of laning, a bit of stacking. At medium to high level, people get it. At medium to low level, they're like, oh my god, we got Nazebo specialist. I'm gonna throw the game like a whinging crybaby. Unfortunately, that's still a thing. Uh, you know, he's just a damage dealer. The tag maybe sometimes hurts him. If he was called Assassin, everyone would be happy. Photon Cannon can now be self-cast. I saw this is something people asked for on Reddit. That's a good change. Alt-E. Uh, it will go on your own location. Many things can, but Photon Cannon could not, even though it has no collision. Let's move on to support. Damage increased from 75 to 80 on the Sacred Sweep. Now, I just want to give you my judgment of Probius right now. He's very strong. Uh, he's going to continue to get stronger and a better win rate. So he doesn't get any nerfs. That means that Probius is still a really good hero right now to purchase, to pick up, and to start training. His wave clear is fast. His zoning is crazy. And he does really well with a backline that needs babysitting. He is the, he is the ranged assassin that needs peel. 
and that provides peel at the same time. He peels for himself and his allies. But uh, just want to say about Ariel that I have her listed at tier 2 because she's dependent on certain teammate pairings. Uh, she's dependent on teammate skill, like their ability to deal damage. But she is very powerful, even though she doesn't have cloak. Uh, sorry. <laughs> even though she doesn't have cloak, and all the cool heroes do. Example, Valera. No. Even though she doesn't have cleanse, uh, I think she's very strong. You can't always pick her. You can't first or second pick her, maybe. But the really good Ariels always make a difference, even by themselves, with uh, mediocre allies. But I do think she could use a little bit of love just to kind of bring her up to the level of Karazim. Uh, Malfurion and Lucio. So let's see what Blizzard has done with her. A little bit of bonus damage on sweep. The center damage goes up a little. The tamer strike damage up a little and the collision damage up a little as well. A pretty decent amount, 15%. Uh, increased cooldown for Resurrect from 70 to 120 and the channel time will only be half a second instead of three. So my idea about it when I was asked a few days or weeks ago was to reduce the channel time from three seconds to two and a half or two and to increase the range by about 10%. And I thought maybe that could bring it in line with the power of Aegis. But Blizzard has created so this very long cooldown to make it really special and impactful. And I only say that with half a tongue in cheek because it is true if it is good, 120 seconds is merited. So let's see if it is. Half a second channel time is very fast and also a 5 second delay between finishing the cast and the hero coming back to life. Audit? Okay. <sighs> so you can cast it easily and effortlessly. But there is a huge telegraph. If that hero is in a compromised position, in 5 seconds later, everyone can aim their crosshairs at the target and blow them up. It does allow Ariel to reposition and go somewhere else. And the range has not been affected. And Aegis can be used more often and is also in place of cleanse. Aegis is a 60 second cooldown that can be used like you would use cleanse. Someone is getting stunned, slowed, rooted, silenced and blown up. Aegis. Block some of it. Damage them back to zone get energy from it and then heal compromised or allied targets this still doesn't do anything for her hope generation it doesn't block a stun and kill chain and therefore it is still bad and it's potentially worse than before and it was bad already so i'm afraid and i think so i'm afraid that this is still very much useless it's much better to prevent than to cure do not I don't think it's good, do not like. Uh, but let's go to the rest. <clears throat> Increase clarity. Damage bonus for completing the quest increased from 120 to 150. That's nice. Righteous Assault, it's the CDR. Cooldown reduction increased from two to three per hero hit. No longer has a cap. That means you could go. L, 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 L. Non-stop slashy slash. Uh, before it would go from 8 seconds to a maximum reduction of 4 seconds, minus 2, minus 2 is 4. Uh, now it will go, if you hit someone in the center, it goes from 8 to 2. And after that, if you hit more people, it just goes from 8 to 0. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Very strong. Repeated offense, quest reward damage bonus increased from 200 to 250. Strong. Uh, Glimmer of Hope was a 50% reduction when you pick up a globe on your next heal. The energy cost reduction. That means if you have a full energy bar, you pick up a globe and you use it, you still have a 75% energy bar. That's really crazy. It's good. And it's a very strong competition. And in fact, it is a very strong competition with Bursting Light, the two second CDR. And also uh, Energized Cord, which is your quote unquote independent energy generation as it allows you to self auto attack hit for extra energy uh, and and spells very strong glimmer of hope very good on a map like tomb of the spider queen and dragon shire empathic link energy stored for damage taken by bestow hope target is increased from 20 to 25 
this is very strong with frontline bruisers like um, Arthas for instance he takes a lot of damage he heals it you get a lot of energy from it when he takes it it's uh, it's pretty big buff pretty big buff both of these and a lot of damage increase they're pushing Ariel to be more of a damage dealer and she's already getting really good uh, damage numbers it's not unusual to see uh, uh, you know someone with um, I actually want to sing that song it's not unusual but I don't want to set off YouTube's song recognition where I sing it so perfectly that the whole audio get blocked so we'll we'll save you from it uh, but it's not unusual for Ariel's to do 25 30k bonus hero damage I mean just hero damage or even more so this is definitely gonna do big numbers blinding flash blind reduction a uh, blind duration three seconds now to two and a quarter that's fair since you can buff it with righteous assault it was very strong uh, I mean I think I, I think it is fair I do think three second is very long on an eight second ability a little bit uh, she was quite good against Illidan with that and you can practically cast it all the time it does compromise your position keep in mind that swift sweep is also at level one so if you have righteous assault it does take some time right piercing lash now also reduces the cooldown by two seconds for each enemy head. that's pretty cool this is the one where you hit everyone in a line it's not easy to use it's not easy to have everyone line up and lash them but you can do it often if people do pile in against uh, buddy diver teams. Then level 20, Shield of Hope has been buffed in cooldown, that's fine. Uh, it is the very best level 20 she has, it was too strong, I think, and too frequent. It just brought it in line with Storm Shield, which I think is only right. But I do hope, uh, no angelic flight buffs, lol. Uh, Lightspeed is the resurrect buff, before it was kind of crappy. You would resurrect and people would be like three times as fast for a while. Um, let's see what they get. Remove the increased health upon reviving. Now causes the cooldown of resurrect to recharge 100% faster while previous target is alive. Not good. Yeah, you go from 120 to 60. As long as they stay alive, you have a 60 second CDR. But that's still... It's still... I don't know. You know what? No. Alright. Brightwing. Now displays... Yay! Now she got the Lucio treatment. It's only visible to Brightwing. And it's the same with Lucio. Uh, and I can only imagine that Blizzard has chosen to do so. To remove some of the visual clutter on the battlefield. Uh, and it's very relevant for teammates of Brightwing and Lucio to know where that healing ring is. But they are putting the onus and the responsibility... Of keeping people in range on the support and I think that's not a crazy thing to do I think it's really nice as Brightwing to be able to know where that range is but it remains the responsibility of the support great change people have asked for this and Blizzard has delivered Lily blinding wind cooldown decreased from 10 to 8 seconds okay wait for it mana cost reduced okay wait for it damage increased okay that's it Lily as the damage dealer got an all-around buff she is on my list she's tier 2 but I think she's very strong in the right situation she's a bit of an easier hero which is fine you can play easy heroes even if you're Mahatma Gandhi uh, even if you're whatever uh, Einstein you can still have fun with it doesn't matter but also to the people where Lily is about as much as they can handle it's great they'll do a bit more a bit more damage a lot of people they may not own all the heroes um, yeah it's a buff to a hero that basically doesn't see pro play all that much. Uh, very little, in fact. Not that much on Hero League either. And there we go. Tassadar. Good changes, I think. Basic attack damage increased from 10 to 12. <laughs> he had a wooden spoon. Now he has a wooden fork. It's not very painful. It'll still break off, but it might just prick the skin. But, alright. Let's just... Let's just tell you what I think of Tassadar right now and what is known about Tassadar right now. Uh, platinum and below, Tassadar will lose you games on Hero League. His win rate probably says, you know, whatever, 40, 45, 50, I don't know how much. 
what I do know is that people are discouraged when Tassadar gets picked. People use it as an excuse to take no other supports. Single support Tassadar is not really viable. Just think of the five-man brawl everyone does in every Platinum and Below game. Five-man brawl. Everyone drops at 20% or dies. Tassadar cannot heal them up. You know, other healers can. They're not happy with it. They're going to be out of mana. Tassadar cannot. Everyone needs to adjust to a Tassadar solo support. Fnatic can do it. Even NA teams can do it. I'm not sure that uh, Hero League and Quick Match teams can do it. That's what I think about Tassadar. But go from Diamond and Master, and especially Grandmaster, and Tassadar is insane, stupid, broken OP. Especially with hyper carries like Vala, Illidan, and Tracer. So Tassadar needs to be brought down at top level, and he needs to be brought up at low level. Let's see what Blizzard has done with him. It's a difficult quandary. Basic attack damage goes up a bit. Plasma shield, duration decrease. Careful Blizzard, dangerous territory. Duration decreased from five to four seconds. Shield amount decreased from 550. So this is a buff so far. Force wall, cooldown reduced. Why is this a buff? Is, um, well, it's not a buff. Why did I say that? It's a nerf. <laughs> I thought it was the CDR. Haha, <laughs> lol. No, it's not a buff. Okay. Um, yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> uh, going on. Uh, force. <laughs> no, that wasn't sarcasm. That was. That was just. We're good now. Shall we move on? Should I turn off chat for a bit? <laughs> uh, yeah. Force will reduce from 10 to 8 seconds. Okay. That's a nerf. No, just kidding. Um, yeah, the cooldown reduced from 10 to 8. That's a buff. Are we clear on this? It's a buff, yeah? <laughs> you can cast it more often. It's good, right? Am I right? It could cost more mana. No. Uh, mana cost reduced from 30 to 25. I'm pretty sure that's a buff. You're going to keep 5 mana. Moving on. Um, yeah. Of course, Archon is 10.8% better. It has a 10.8% higher win rate than Forceful. I saw this on Reddit. Uh, so they're trying to bring this one up in line. Um, okay. Kaidaran Resonance. This one is important because this is a problem talent. Regeneration Globes grant 50% more mana to Tassadar. It already was like that. Increase the shield amount of Plasma by 15%. Additional 15. Okay. Alright. No more... Uh, uh, 8 second uh, cooldown on shield is now 5 seconds nonsense. So what's going to happen is that you have an 8 second cooldown... And it's going to be a four second spell. And yes, it can get stronger. And yes, he gets more mana, but that's it. You're either downed or you're not. 50% uptime, 50% downtime on a hyper carry. Tracer, Illidan, Vala. Sometimes you'll have it, sometimes you won't. Light switch on, light switch off. Tight comes in, tight comes out. You drown or you sunbathe. That's good. Good changes. I'm glad that they did this. I'm glad that they did this. Uh, I think chat just broke. Where can you read this note? Uh, exclamation mark patch note. You can't explain that. Very true, Alpha Star. Sun goes up, sun comes down. That's right. Uh, so this is good. This is good changes. Can I link the real link for PTR? Yeah, go ahead. Um, okay, good. Colors, celerity, movement, speed, bonus, reduced from 25 to 20. Duration reduced 5 to 4, obviously, because uh, the duration is 4 seconds now. <clears throat> Colors Embrace. Lifesteal increased from 50 to 60. Okay, so they didn't want to affect the lifesteal part of the hyper carries, but they did want to create Vala, Illidan, Tracer, vulnerability moment of 4 seconds. But they're making up for it with a bigger lifesteal during the off time. That's okay for me. That's okay. Um, Twilight Archon is a duration increase. That means if at one second left, 
and it's a 10 second ability and he attacks with Archon it's now two to three seconds left instead of a full reset within any of the 10 second period that's fine that's good I'm glad he got mostly nerfed in a big way but the question is does he go up at low level he's got more damage basic attack which low level players Sometimes they don't do it enough, but it's relatively easier than something like Regeneration Globe Collection. I don't think it brings him up at uh, at level 1. I mean at low level. But it does bring him down at high level. That's what I care about the most. Um, Force Wall is a bit better. It's good changes. I guess... I wouldn't say that they necessarily bring Tassadar up at low level, but I'm glad they brought him down at high. And it's also going to create more flexibility in the pro play picks, particularly in EU and in NA scene, as in Korea he does not seem as highly prioritized. Now, the moment we've been waiting for, Utha, Uther. No more 10 armor? Ah! Yeah, but I think he gets something in return. So let's hold on to our hammers here and not smite people with great justice yet. Base maximum health increase by about 102. It's about 5% health increase. So he loses 10% armor, but a 5% health increase. And likewise for his regeneration. Moving on, holy light. Healing amount reduced from 427 to 380, but it always heals himself if cast on an ally not as much 50 percent. so he gets the Tyrande Q treatment Tyrande heals herself if healing an ally yes yes she does Greetings, why is my friend. voice like this I don't know you're doing it yourself grubs it's kind of weird <laughs> holy radiance healing amount reduced from 219 to 160 which now matches the damage by the way uh, and the mana cost has been reduced to 60 Eternal Devotion, when Uther heals anyone with a basic ability, they gain 25 armor for 2 seconds. This effect does not stack with itself. What? Okay, so you can't QW heal someone and give them 50 armor. Got it. Aerodin, thanks for subbing. Okay, that's, that's good to know. Alright. So he can heal himself and then he has 25 armor instead of what he used to have 10. Also, when he heals anyone, that means when he heals an ally and heals himself from it, and W always heals himself the way it works because it originates from his own point, he also gets that armor during that time because it reads when he heals anyone, which includes himself. So he's got two abilities that give himself armor. Much like ETC gives himself armor right now with any of his abilities. Now that's really good. Conjurer's Pursuit has been removed. It was uh, a generic talent that remained on him because in the last Uther rework, Blizzard didn't want to slash the standard piano build while still offering more utility to the other abilities. So they kept the piano build with things like Protective Shield, Conjurer's Pursuit, because they knew... In the future, they were going to change him in a greater way, but for now, they didn't want to affect it. So finally, Conjurer's Pursuit goes away, and let's look at the rest. Wave of Light no longer has a cap on mana return and cooldown reduction. Now grants the benefits when enemy heroes are damaged. Increase the amount of mana reduced from 8 to 10. And they added a quest component. Heal or damage 60 heroes with Holy Radiance. And it will increase the duration of Eternal Devotion's armor effect to 3 seconds. That's pretty damn good. That is pretty damn good. Moving on. Hammer of the Lightbringer. Uther's basic attacks restore 1.5% of his max mana. You hit 75 enemy heroes with basic attacks, which is kind of a cool quest. Because supports don't really hit enemy heroes all that much. Particularly if they are a melee support. I just want to go ahead and tell you that this is a difficult quest to complete. Oh wait, yeah, two three, not by three. I said two three, right? Um, this is a difficult quest for Morales. It's difficult to a degree, not nearly as much, but melee difficult. <laughs> Basic attacks. Greetings, also, friend. good evening, Grubby. Good evening, Arunkar. 
Basic attacks also reduce the cooldown of Hammer of Justice by one second. Okay, so, uh, all right. Greetings, Fist of friend. Justice. Thanks, dude. Okay. They embedded it in this one. Got it. So you got the Lightbringer, Mana Element, and the... Uh, that's cool. Before you couldn't take them both, now you can have them both. <laughs> Fist of Justice is gone. And there's a new talent called Silver Touch. Greetings, Q. friend. Yo! Genji Grub, hi. I don't know what else to say, so I'll just say hi. Less than three. Hi. Thank you very much for the two months reset, Kibotsu. Reduce damage taken from heroes after using Eternal Devotion's armor effect. What? Greetings, friend. Hey, Grubster. How's it going? D. Very well. Very excited about the changes we're reading about here. After reducing 40 sources of hero damage, reduce the mana cost of Holy Lamp in 20. Looking forward to my level 17 youth of being viable again. So am I. Uh, mine is level 18 and a half. I've been looking forward to it for a long time. <laughs> Hammer of the Lightbringer is either bugged or does not reflect the actual in-game talent. It says basic attacks against enemies in-game. Works on minions. Really? Okay. Well, we'll have to uh, kind of put a footnote there. I wonder which one uh, is actually intended. Thanks for that note. We'll f figure out which one. And thanks for the sub train, guys. So after reducing 40... And after using 80 sources of hero damage, reduce the mana cost of Holy Light by an additional 20 and increase the cast range by 50. Got him. Got him. Beacon of Light has been moved to 16. While below half health, Uther receives triple the self heal when healing others with Holy Light. So 50% more than he heals someone else for. 380, 190 times 3. 50% more. Greetings, friend. That's... So you'll never have to heal yourself with this after that. That's pretty insane. You heal someone and you heal even more? Uh, Boundless Conviction. Shield is gone. New. Pursuit of Justice. Casting Hammer of Justice increases Uther's movement speed by 20% for 3 seconds. This reminds me of Burden of Guilt, which was, I think, a 20% slow on someone else, but instead it increases his own so your relative speed to someone is still the same uh but uh you don't help your allies with it so to speak but you can also use it as an escape interesting holy Maybe fire has been moved to four really. and does a little Love damage your patch reviews less than three thank you very much alpha shadow so this is usual when they bring a talent down from from an upper tier to a lower it's always a little bit less damage and uh and that's normal <laughs> because higher talents are more valuable no more no more cleanse and he gets three new things let's take a look uh okay Ar Ar armor faith holy light recharges twice as fast for six right. seconds when uther is stunned rooted or silenced uh okay Sorry, I almost had to sneeze. I think it's good. Okay. So basically, you get 6 seconds CDR. But not immediately. And it can transcend cooldowns. As, lo as soon as you cast it, as long as you cast it immediately, it starts eating away at your next cooldown as well. <laughs> Stunt, root, or silence. And it doesn't say it has a max either. But that does mean if you get stunned at second zero, so to speak, Greetings, and you just cast friend. a Q. Thank you, as always, for the quality streams. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Alamara and Aquila3. That means if you cast Q, you immediately get stunned. You have a six second CDR. And then if after two seconds you get stunned again, it'll be six seconds for a total of eight instead of six plus six. It doesn't say that it stacks it up and adds it. Uh, okay, so Guardian Greetings, of Ancient Kings, friend. healing a stunned, rooted, or silenced hero with a basic ability increases the armor bonus of eternal. <laughs> okay, well, that's... That can be better. That can be better than cleanse. 
and it can be worse. That's pretty damn strong. Hand of Protection. Activate to make target ally unstoppable for one second. Cannot be cast on yourself. 90 second cooldown. Okay, so this is the new cleanse. Which is uh, 30 seconds longer than cleanse, but it's reducible by basic attacks against anything. Nice. Uh, this is a hyper cleanse. It's pretty crazy. Greetings, friend. Thank you very much. Do you know why? Uh, level 10 gets skipped, no changes, and then 13. Blessed Champion. Before it was like you Q and then you do like an area of effect heal. Healing for basic attacks reduced from 20 to 15 of Holy Light, but is calculated from the combined total of I Holy Light's ally you. and self heal. Hello, Grubby. I really like your stream. That's why I just want to spank you very much. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, 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 call me in a few hours, call me in four hours, my stream is over. Um, so Q healing was a little bit less, but, uh, okay, so that's, I can't do the exact maths right now, but it is a little bit of a buff, a little bit of a buff. The exact maths will be interesting. Uh, moving on. <laughs> Holy shock, move to level 4, uh, okay, no longer increases the value of Uther's next holy light, but instead refunds 45 mana when cast on an enemy. Holy shock still heals Uther for 200 if cast on an enemy. That's interesting. Well met. Wow. Shrink ray is gone. Well met. Oh! Well met. Hammer of justice. Also reduces enemy hero movement speed by 25% and damage. It reduces their damage. So it's a, it's a shrink ray and burden of guilt in one. A reduced version of shrink ray and then... Actually, it's just shrink ray. <laughs> it's 50% uh, it's as good as shrink ray, but it happens on every hammer of justice. Crazy. Uh, <laughs> nice talent name. Uh, level 16, hardened focus, gone, righteous defense, gone, because that was the armor, wasn't it? They decided actually to take righteous defense and split it like Jesus's mana and bread and split it into bits and give it to everyone so everyone can have armor, just like on the Oprah Winfrey show. Gathering radiance is gone. I think there's elements of it in the earlier tiers. Tears Deliverance. Tyriel or Taronda? That's what I wonder. Who is Tear? Hitting an allied hero with Holy Radiance increases their healing received by 40% for 6 seconds. Okay. Uh, Tears of Titan. Oh, a Viking god? A Titan from WoW? Ah. Got him. So, isn't it true that before there is a Holy Radiance talent that gives him practically instant CDR? They said there's no more cap. No longer has a cap on CDR. So if you hit everyone, you hit yourself, then you're going to get constant of these and they get 40% more healing from your next W. It's within the space of six seconds instead of outside of it. And also Q is more, it's crazy. Now let's look at level 20, divine protection. Eternal devotions armor can now stack twice. Each new application will refresh. 50% <laughs> shield all the time. It's strong. It's godly, but it does mean you give up the uh, the return of Uther. Oh yeah, and also when you're dead, when Uther's dead, like my donator said, you give armor to allies in ghost form. Oh my god. I think Uther's rework could make him work. What do you guys think? 
We take a moment to have a drink. Moving on, Anubarak, he is the second or first highest win rate hero across the ladder right now. I, I find when he's you. played by a, uh, oh, hold Curious on a sec. what you think of the attack move target point section of the patch notes. Will you be enabling it? I will not be enabling it, though I do think it's a good change. Some people will use it, I, w I personally won't. Because Heroes right now is working exactly like every other RTS from Blizzard that I've ever played. So it would create unexpected interaction. Just to explain, if I attack move from here to over there, I will attack whatever is closest to me. And that is expected behavior for me. The new system that says, if I attack move here and I'm here, it will attack something in the vicinity of the click. Which is really nice if you want to stutter step and use attack move without clicking on someone, but you click near the enemy Tyrande. So you're going to, if you're in range, attack the Greetings, enemy Tyrande over the Illidan that's on top of you. Superb content ever. I wish I knew about the Prime sub sooner. Keep it up, chat. Thank you very much, Halstead. But again, I think that's a really good thing that it is, uh, you know, it is possible to choose this, but I personally won't take it. I'd rather improve my accuracy and actually have the stutter step to click that backline target manually. And then have attack move around me, function as I expected, 406096. Uh, I think Anubarak right now is very valuable, even in the hands of very weak players. He is, in my opinion, broken in the way that he has a baseline spell shield. I love for a hero to have a specific role, but I don't understand why he has both base spell shield and a passive, uh, the passive and the dampened magic on top of it, which also doesn't really provide a lot of skillful play or counterplay dampened magic. It's just kind of always up and then it's not. And it's like, yeah, you should aim your spells after it, but he's pretty much not gonna die to spells anyway, unless he grossly feeds into the enemy team. Um, let's see what they do with him. If you are bored by what I'm saying, you've already Greetings, read it. Friend. I'm gonna read it right now. Thank you for the amazing and in-depth patch notes analysis. Keep up the great work. No problem. Thank you very much, really, and welcome back. Hovering over Burrow Charge will now show the range indicator for distance traveled, as well as the area affected when he emerges from Burrow. Okay, that's currently not the case, so that's good. Uh, always nice. Quality of life changes. Uh, damage per second reduced for Locust Swarm. That's pretty good. Though I do think Cocoon and Locust Swarm are strong. Locust is integral to certain comps and playstyles. So I think it's good that they bring the damage down a little. Range indicator will be okay. Good, good change as well. They're starting to really fill out the range indicators for all kinds of spells. Where it is relevant to know to how far your spell will extend. Subterranean Shield, which I do think is... The best, if not the top two best, level seven talents as part of his diving kit, reduced a little, which I think is a good change. Uh, unfortunately, no changes to the spell shield interaction. I think Alex the Proji had some pretty good points with uh, Warrior and Anubarak that really saw eye to eye with me on how I see it as well. But no changes to that yet, still a little bit of nerf here and there. Moving on, urticating spines. Hovering over the ability button will show range indicator, nice quality of life change. Uh, AP center, uh, cooldown reduction decreased from two to one and a half second period hit. I think debilitation, the spell power reduction, burrow charge is better. It should be better, but p people aren't picking it as often, so I'm probably wrong. So they're nerfing the one that gets spread. most picked, which is this one. Not an immediate escape if you hit everyone. Good. Make a Nubarox think twice about burrow charging in. Tiny nerfs. He's still going to be top, but maybe it will reduce his win rate by a percentage or two. For the record, right now, I think he's around 55% win rate, which is uh, borderline broken OP. But if anything, we can say it's strong. So these changes are merited, and they're small enough not to uh, make baby Anubara cry. ETC is underperforming. His win rate dropped a lot, and he's now 
in the lower 40% range, whereas before it was around 50%. Don't mind me, just patching in my sub range. <laughs> Thank you very much. 16 months and Istin, appreciate it, guys. Uh, ETC got a big health nerf and he got armor instead of increased attack speed. And the aura on Rockstar became only on himself, it's no longer an aura, it's individual. So, health increase, a small one, not a lot, just a bit. Understood, Nuko. Uh, not 100% relevant, but understood. Thank you. Uh, level 1. Guitar Hero. Healing increase from 40% to 50% of damage dealt by basic attacks. This is the least valid level 1 ability. And they buff it a bit, so that's fine. It's not going to either break him nor, aid him nor heal him, let's say. S speed Metal. Movement speed increase from 10 to 15%. Okay. It is the least used level 4. And for good reason, 50% range on face melt is insane. And the only reason not to take it is because you want Crowd Surfer to escape from an entomb or to go through a force wall. Speed Metal is the least used for that reason. It has the least utility. Now, maybe we'll have a little bit more. It's a good change because it got used the least. And if anything, a greater versatility and viability of talents always leads to a greater win rate. Just from having more options. Wow! Okay, so in the pro scene, people already started picking this over Echo Pedal as Echo Pedal got a nerf in PvP uh, and uh, was mostly having a PhD in PvE. Now, Pinball Wizard, quadruple damage. Not bad. Uh, Hammer On also gets a 5%. Okay. So Echo Pedal was the most popular, they buffed the other two. I think this is going to be the one to take, but you might want to go for Hammer On on Warhead Junction, where you will have a lot of one on ones, or on Battlefield of Eternity, where you need single target damage. Decent changes to ETC, it may help him a bit. Few percentages that, you know, maybe. Stitches right now, I have him at tier 3, which is my lowest tier. I have three tiers and then God tier. Um, I, I would rather not play with Stitches in Hero League. He is a highly coordination dependent hero. People take the wrong alt all the time because Gorge is so cool. Uh, but he was instrumental in Team Dignitas' victory at the Western Clash. So we gotta be careful. You never want to buff stitches too much. Uh, health increased from 2900 to 3000. And his damage increased on Slam. Okay. It doesn't really change... Uh, sit yeah, it sounds like four tiers. You're right, slow get. <laughs> That's true. Uh, okay, so this doesn't really change him too much in terms of priority in pro play. Because the reasons for him to be picked wasn't about his damage or survivability per se. It was about hook, isolation. Uh, and, yeah. But this helped him in Hero League. So I think these are really nice light-handed approaches to kind of bringing him up at everywhere except pro play. Good changes. Nice move, nice move, Blizzard. Uh, Zarya, energy, rate of decay increased from 2.5 to 3 per second. Wow. Now, keep in mind that Zarya, she's been performing really well in my last few Hero League games. I've personally made a commitment, privately, to play her more because she performs so well. There have been MVP Zarya's on my team and the enemy team non-stop. And she is first pick, first ban in Korea right now. The best gaming nation, arguably. So even though she doesn't see rampant play at every echelon of play on Hero League right now, she's very strong. So she's going to get a bigger rate of decay. That's a nerf. Correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, that, sh that should be merited. Uh, Graviton Surge, 20 seconds off. Okay. Okay. Uh, Demolitions Expert. Wait, I can't go beyond three decimals. My brain isn't wired that way. Uh, cooldown reduction decrease from half a second. To da da da. For five hours, it's up to three. Okay, so a small little nerf on this. It's the most popular level one. 
Uh, together we are strong. Damage needed per point of energy gain reduced from 96. So this is brought up. This barely gets picked. Uh, big buff on this. Maximum charge is now a 20 globe quest. This is the other most popular level 1 talent together with demolitions. So two nerfs and one little buff. Give me 20. Cooldown reduction granted upon completion. Completing the quest. Decrease from 3 to 2 seconds. Okay. This is uh, this is okay. It's a little nerf. It's a fairly popular talent. What? This is already very good and popular. <laughs> Wait, max charge is a buff? Oh, energy gained. I didn't read properly. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Wow, okay. Buff. Buff. Nerf. Damn. Cleansing shield. Cooldown reduction increased from 2 to 3 seconds. That's a nice little buff. It's the allied shield where you can cleanse someone. Has also an embedded CDR. Plasma shock. Slow duration increased from 1.5 to 2. Not bad. Not bad. Pretty good. Gravity kills. Damage increased from 140 to 175. Okay. It still sucks, but it sucks less, so okay. Clear out. Bonus maximum energy increase from 10 to 15. I don't think anyone is ever going to take that. She has rewind. Uh, Gildaric told me speed barrier is currently the lowest popularity and the lowest win rate. Okay, but 50% is insane. And it was already very good. I just think... In, uh, in Hero League, people don't notice that they get it. So they don't use it immediately, the 35%. And that's why. At 50%, you pretty much can't help but notice it. Okay, that was it. For the rest, bug fixes. Art. Toggling spell shield no longer cancels Hearthstone channels. <laughs> Murky can no longer nuke during safety bubble. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of skimming through these. Tastingo will prevent Zildjian from dying. If he cast it at the moment, he would have taken fatal damage. Oh, we're killing them all behind the gate? Oh, yeah! Impressive. <laughs> you can do that! <laughs> you can jump in and then... To kill someone, and there's no towers on. Look at this! I'll just show you one more time. <laughs> yes, a map of my liking. You can now BM without getting killed. 